It's quite intriguing how ethnic Germans had such a huge impact on the United States, becoming one of the largest, if not the largest, ethnic group in the entire country. Yet today, nearly the entirety of the German community is heavily assimilated into mainstream American culture, with there only being a handful of monolingual German-speaking villages left out in Amish country, and their unique lifestyle and culture is in danger of extinction. However, another pseudo-community that doesn't get nearly as much attention is the German community just south of the border. Although Germans in Latin America aren't entirely connected in the same way that German Americans are because of the non-contiguous nature of their settlement and the fact that Germans are spread out over the dozen or more countries of the region, we can still compile some of the history of these old German migrants and settlements that are not only still around today, but contrary to those in the US, are actually thriving. Unlike other European migrants to the Americas like the Italians, British, and Slavs, who for the most part had highly concentrated immigration to specific regions of Latin America, such as Italians to the Southern Cone, Irish and Welsh to Patagonia, and Croats to Tierra del Fuego, the Germans actually had countless settlements established throughout the region, although some areas did see a higher number of migrants than others. Similar to German migrants to Northern America, there were many reasons that these immigrants came to these destinations, whether they were missionaries, humble farmers, simply trying to make a better life for their families, and yes, even former National Socialists. More on that later. But where and when did this trend of German settlement in the Romance-speaking New World begin? Well, the journey of many of these immigrants begins in some of the most unexpected of places, and some of the routes and paths they took were so bizarre they've piqued the intrigue of many around the world. Interestingly, the flow of Germans to Latin America begins hundreds of years ago, not too long after the discovery of the New World, and in the 1530s the first German colony was established in modern Venezuela, a few miles outside of Maracaibo, with permission from the Spanish crown, who were in debt to German bankers. Although this small colony was very short-lived and lasted less than a decade before it was abandoned, smaller numbers of German merchants started to settle in other areas of Spanish America, particularly those that were already established, such as Panama, Hispaniola, and even Peru further south. Similar to the Hessians' use in the American Revolutionary War, Prussian mercenaries were contracted as soldiers for wars fought in Latin America, including being hired by the Dutch in the 17th century in their war against the Portuguese. In 1630, the Dutch attempted to establish a colony in the northeast corner of Brazil in order to gain more land for agricultural production, and the short-lived Dutch colony known as New Holland was settled by many Dutch and German farmers before being reconquered by the Portuguese and most of the migrants were expelled. Now, the vast majority of these early German immigrants who came from Prussia, Austria, Switzerland, and other German states were almost completely enveloped by the emerging Hispanic culture of the Americas and had not yet begun to carve out their own villages and neighborhoods. This period of German immigration didn't begin until the 1800s when Latin American countries began fighting for independence across both continents and with most countries being a mix of Amerindian, Spanish, and Mestizo populations, the new governments desired immigrants from European countries and Western Europe's burgeoning population was a prime target. Initially, Germans in the northern half of Latin America didn't establish their own agricultural colonies, but rather became active in the commerce section of Latin American economies, although by the 1820s, large numbers of German immigrants in Brazil, which was still tied to Portugal at the time, were gaining land and power. It was rather standard for Germans to marry other white ethnic groups in these countries, such as Italians, French, or Dutch, and even not too uncommon for Germans to intermarry into the Mestizo, Pardo, or Amerindian populations, especially in large cities where intermixing was already commonplace. So the Brazilian and other Latino governments didn't see German nationalism as a particularly pressing threat. However, following the unification of Germany in 1871, the Brazilian government put restrictions on German immigration in order to keep them from becoming a majority in certain regions of the country, especially in the south, which already had more immigrants than citizens. Another region where Germans settled was in Mexico, and along with Anglo-American settlers from the southern U.S., Germans made up one of the largest European communities in the Mexican state of Tejas and Coahuila. 
Following the Texas Revolutionary War, Germans were actually fairly divided between support of the Anglo-Texians and Mexican government. And one story told here in Texas is how during negotiations during the Texas War of Independence, at a large gathering of Texan and Mexican troops, out of the entire army there wasn't a single Spanish speaker on the Texan side and not a single English speaker on the Mexican side. However, there were two German-born soldiers, one in each army, who could communicate with each other in German and translate back to each side. Today, Texas is well known for its vibrant German community, the largest of the southern United States, and there are still German settlements in northern Mexico, especially the state of Chihuahua. Similarly, the town of Colonia Tovar in Venezuela was established in the 1800s as a colony for German migrants from Baden-Württemberg, and the majority of its inhabitants still speak a unique dialect of German that is difficult to understand for other native German speakers. This brings us to one of the more unlikely sources of German immigrants in Latin America, that being regions outside of Germany. You see, ethnic Germans had been migrating to Eastern Europe for centuries before the unification of Germany, with one of the largest enclaves located in the Russian Empire, a group known as the Volga Germans. Facing troubles with the Russian government, many Volga Germans left Russia, Kazakhstan, and other parts of Eastern Europe for Latin America, especially Argentina, where an estimated 60% of German Argentines are of Volga German descent. The Mennonites are unique among German migrants not only for their incredible lifestyle, but for the odd way in which they settled in the region. The Mennonites were originally a Protestant sect from Europe, however many fled to America because of extreme persecution, and their descendants in the American state of Pennsylvania became known as the Amish, although many Mennonites established colonies even further, such as in Canada and the western United States. Mennonites from the U.S. and Canada trekked south in order to settle uninhabited lands, while while Mennonites from the USSR fled to Latin America in order to evade communist rule. And today, Mennonites in Belize, Paraguay, and Bolivia, despite making up only 2-3% to of the population, contribute 30-40% to of the agricultural production of these nations, living in some of the most isolated areas of these countries, and still have a very traditional lifestyle. Now, during World War II, the Nazi party hoped to gain support among its massive ethnic diaspora and targeted foreign communities of German origin, especially among more recently settled areas, which made Brazil a prime target. And although a handful of South American-born Germans did join the war effort in Europe, the vast majority of the community didn't affiliate themselves with the party. Now, the whole Nazis in South America gag isn't entirely a myth, though, as following World War II, Argentine President Juan Perón, who was partially sympathetic to the National Socialist cause, set up passages in order to smuggle former SS officers out of Europe in order to use their military and technical experience to improve the country. All in all, an estimated 10,000 former National Socialist officers and their families evaded capture by fleeing to South America, where they knew they could blend in with the existing German community and would not be extradited or prosecuted. As of 2018, there are an estimated 20 million people of full or partial ethnic German descent in Latin American countries today, compared with 50 million in the United States, with over half or 12 million residing in Brazil, with the next largest communities in Argentina, Paraguay, Mexico, and Guatemala. Although in terms of actual percentages, the largest at around 6 to 8 percent are Paraguay and Argentina, both of which have large Mennonite as well as other ethnic German migrants. Out of this 20 million people, only a fraction, perhaps one-third or seven million, are completely unmixed, unassimilated, and still speak the German language, and this includes the 200 to 300,000 Mennonites who, despite initially being numerically insignificant, have exponentially grown as a community because of an unwavering high birth rate, very similar to the Amish community of Pennsylvania, who, unlike many other European groups in the state, still have a positive net growth rate. This, of course, means that the majority of Germans in Latin America are culturally assimilated into their new countries, speaking either Spanish or Portuguese as a first language, and no longer adhering to any traditional German customs, although earlier German immigrants did contribute much to early Latin American culture. 
It's also noteworthy that Catholics are overrepresented among German Latin Americans, making up a slight majority with a Protestant and irreligious minority, and this can be attributed to both the desire of Catholic Germans to have an accommodating society, and hence choosing Catholic Latin America, and Protestant immigrants that would later convert to Catholicism in order to blend in. And all this is without mentioning that Germanic peoples have already influenced Latino culture before Latin America was even a thing. If you saw my earlier video on the Goths and Vandals, then you'd know that the nations of Spain and Portugal themselves partially owe their very existence to the Germanic people, as even though the Goths were responsible for the collapse of the Western Roman Empire and established the Visigoth Kingdom in Iberia, it was also the descendants of said Goths who would hold their own against the advancing Islamic Caliphate and were instrumental in the reconquest of Iberia, with many of the noble families of Spain and Portugal being of Germanic ancestry. So, to conclude, despite smaller numbers, Germans have contributed more to Latin American societies than most people would ever guess, and likely long after the last German-speaking towns in the U.S. fades into history, the Mennonites of Belize, or Paraguay, or Mexico, or Peru will continue to carry on their traditions and culture. So please let me know your thoughts on the German immigration to and influence on modern Latin American countries. Let me know which Latin American country you think was most heavily impacted by the Germans. And as always, thank you so much for watching. This has been Mason, and auf Wiedersehen, mein Freund.